So we breathe in. I invite you to close your eyes or lower them. Let us bring our awareness to this now moment. Less of the human and more of the divine. So we tap in, tune in, turn on to this very moment as we invoke the presence, the awareness, and our connection to the oneness of all that is. It's by divine appointment that we've said yes to this moment and all the moving parts that make up the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living's service, both in person and online. We breathe in with an awareness and a deep appreciation and gratitude for being here right here and right now. We give thanks for all that is being presented in today's service, our inspirational speaker, the music, our sound team, People who have come are and participated in person, the practitioners. We say yes to spring ahead <laughs> and to what is ours to know, experience, and be awakened to. We believe that there's a perfect working of a perfect law happening at all times under all conditions. So we say yes, and together we say, and so it is. I have an assistant who is going to help me with lighting the candles. We are going to honor all paths. 
And since we're in the season of peace slash nonviolence, we are respectfully lighting the candles of love and the candles of peace. So Judy, our Vanna White of candle lighting, will be lighting those candles. And as a reminder, we are an interfaith gathering, a spiritual community that honors all teachings and all spiritual teachers. As we light these candles, we have a prayer for this candle. There's a prayer for every week. There's nine weeks in the season. This is the Native American Prayer for Peace. So gently close your eyes and feel these words. O oh, great spirit of our ancestors, I rise my pipe to you. To your messengers, the four winds, and to Mother Earth, who provides for your children. Give us the wisdom to teach our children to love, to respect, and to be kind to each other so they may grow with peace of mind. Let us learn to share all good things that you provide for us on this earth. Just breathe that in and release. The quote for today or affirmation is, and I'd like you to repeat it after me. I choose to consistently, I choose to consistently nurture, my spiritual growth nurture my spiritual growth and deepen, and deepen knowing, this is the way knowing this is the way to inner peace, to inner peace confidence, confidence, ease, ease and, grace and grace in every area of my life. In every area of my life. And so it is. There is, she was lighting both candles, but thank you. It's always great to know you have a backup. <laughs> and so it is. You will do amazing things with the choice each new day brings. You take, bless the progress that you make. Reason you live is found in every gift you give. Love your life, love your dreams. You will do amazing things. Amazing, amazing. You will do amazing. Amazing things, 
I do believe we can do a better job than that. <laughs> Amazing things. What a great song. So if you want to be part of the flock, see Aaron, check out the other members, and you too can be part of the chorus. I'm Christina, one of the many licensed practitioners here at the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living, and we want to welcome you to Sunday service. Clock's ahead. Woohoo! Spring is in the air. So one of the things here at the center that we are anchored in is spiritual practices and the first runner-up is prayer so we deeply believe in spiritual prayer as established by our founders affirmative prayer and I wanted to read just something that Ernest Holmes wrote about affirmative prayer through the use of faith and belief is affirmative prayer something greater than ourselves acted upon us as we turn to the divine center within then realizing the fullness of the activity of the living spirit is working through us, as us, and in us, we announce our good, we set our intention. So we offer prayer after every service, and at this time I'd like to recognize my colleagues. If you'd please stand. We have Stevie, Ann, our minister, Bob, Judy, myself. We're here, so if you want to get a one-minute miracle after service, let us know. Otherwise... We have the lovely blue slips. You can fill them out, or you can go online at the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living and fill out a prayer request. All prayer requests are confidential. There's also a list of licensed practitioners. If you feel inclined, you want to have a one-minute miracle. Today, we're supported by the Facebook live stream, but after today's service, if you want to see today's service or any of the previous service, just go to YouTube and type in the search bar, Alaska Center for Spiritual Living, and you will see all the stored Sunday services. We're in the season of nonviolence and peace, and it's happening now through April 4th. There's a peace table. Lots of everything on the table is complimentary, so help yourself. There's a small lending library, affirmation cards, coloring pages, and more. We also have some announcements. We have, just want to let you know, you probably know, that our center is committed to giving back to the community. So we practice the spiritual law of circulation, and 5% of our collective offerings are in circulation to our Anchorage community. And this month we have chosen the Alaska Blood Bank. So that's great. We also have some ongoing support that's happening, complimentary, real time. You can do it from the convenience of your own space. And that is we have, each week we have Wednesday meditation by Reverend Linda. It's at 5.30. You can find that information in the link on Alaska, on Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. There you'll also find during this time period for the season, Social Meditation with Gail Jackson. It's only a half an hour. It's on Thursdays from 7 to 7.30 p.m. Really fascinating. Really an, an amazing meditation form. We also have Saturdays whereupon we do a oneness prayer meditation the first and third Saturdays. We do visioning for inner peace on the first Wednesday. All of this information and the links are on the Alaska Center for Spirituals website, so please avail yourself. What's coming up next month, April 24th, is our annual business meeting. It's after service, and we are allowing ourselves to be open to some new people joining the board. We have two positions. It's a three-year term. You must be a member of the center and have taken foundation class. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, reach out to Reverend Don. Tiffany is here today as our guest speaker, and you can ask her about her experience. And there is an application process that needs to be returned by April 5th. We do have the minister's moment, which will be presented by our own minister. Thank you for your attention and for listening to the announcements. Thank you, Christina. 
Two things for the minister's moment today. The first one is the ever popular subject of uh, masks and what are we going to do? Um, currently, the Anchorage area is running almost, you know, consistently. It's been that way for the last, what, Judy, three or four weeks. We're about 80 to 90 new cases a day. And that translates into a little under 30 per 100,000 people. Current CDC recommendations and guidelines are to be below 10 per 100,000. Uh, so we've got a ways to go. However, the CDC will be issuing some new uh, guidelines later this week. And so I encourage you to pay attention to uh, our, your e-blast or uh, our website for changes. But for right now, today, we're remaining distance as best we can. We're wearing masks um, and we're trying to keep the spread of this pandemic to an absolute minimum. The second item that I have today is Aaron is, has been selected to be uh, a pianist for a musical here in town. It's, by the, it's called Ordinary Days. And I would invite everyone to join me in supporting Aaron as the pianist for this on certain selected days. Um, I think it's a very challenging piece. I think she's doing a, a wonderful job. I know she doesn't half do things. <laughs> ah, I see we've got it on the slide right now. Um, One of the dates is wrong. It is. Uh, it didn't mean to be. <laughs> Friday the 25th at 7, and then Sunday the 27th is a matinee at 3, not at 7. So um, the easiest, fastest way that I found to get tickets for that is go to the uh, Anchorage uh, Community Theater's website, it's actalaska.org, Alpha Charlie Tango Alaska, all lowercase letters, dot org. And there is a big button on there to purchase tickets. So I invite everyone to join me in supporting Aaron in this endeavor. And as we mature and our people are out in the community doing things like this, I hope that we can fall into the habit of supporting our uh, comrades in uh, their endeavors in this community. So thank Whee! you. Love me. 
this way. I take notes, notes and learn to love myself the same way. And this is how I learn to love myself. Here I am, I'm awake, I'm alive. Here I am, I'm ready to thrive. Here I am, it feels good to be me. Here I am, and I'm feeling so free, ready to blast into infinity. Now I risk it all. I follow my heart and I trust in my soul. I aim my goals high as I start to sing. Realizing I can do anything. And this is how I learn to believe in myself. Here I am. Here I am, I'm ready to thrive. Here I am, it feels good to be me. Here I am, and I'm feeling so free, ready to blast into infinity. Thank you, God, I'm finally free. Feels like we got a little bit of Zoe in the building. Yeah. Uh, I always feel her support one way or another. Good morning, long time no see. Hi, I'm very happy to be here. You know, it's very ironic because the title of my talk today is Hide and Seek with Spirit. And if you say here I am during that game, you're gonna reveal where you're hiding. So I just thought that that, that song was a little bit ironic. <laughs> So um, when I partnered with Rev on the subject matter for today, he mentioned that we're, we're talking about how we're making our spiritual practices feel fun, exciting, bring a little bit of that playfulness back into something that it can just seem a little serious at times because it is how we operate our lives. It is change your thinking, change your life. That's a big thing. And um, I consider myself kind of serious sometimes. And so I was like, a playful talk. Rev, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> And um, so I took a step back and I'm like, you know what? No, I'm already doing this. So hide and seek with spirit. Now we usually growing up, I'm sure everybody remembers playing hide and seek with their friends. And if you did not play that game, it's, it's fairly simple. You come together, you make it a point to give yourself a certain amount of time and everybody hides except for the one person that's going to look and you want to find all your friends that are hiding in whatever places. And in my family, a lot of times you would get scared because somebody would pop out of their hiding spot if they took too long and they'll scare you. So it got a little bit, got a little bit convoluted there. But when I think about playing hide and seek with spirit, it's a little bit different. And I kind of thought about how I was doing this as a child and maybe back then I didn't realize it. So one of my favorite things to do as a kid was play hide and seek by looking for four leaf clovers. And I always felt like I was connecting with the divine because I was out in mother nature and I always felt very connected to spirit. And um, four leaf clovers are considered to be lucky. Three leaf clovers are what you're typically gonna find. And I would spend hours as a kid looking through these fields of clovers to find my four leaf. Sometimes I would even find a five leaf clover I even remember finding up to a seven leaf clover. I'll never forget. I was like, whoa, <laughs> how does this even happen? They're starting to go down the, the stem because they couldn't all fit. And so this one day I'm out doing that and my couple of cousins are out with me and we went down this trail and they weren't very interested in it because they weren't finding any. Understandable, it's not as fun if you're not finding what you're looking for. But I'm out there and I'm, I'm just waiting for spirit to like reveal, like I almost felt like I could hear like, look right here. And so it felt like this, this game with the divine and it was so exciting for me. And for me, as I was looking for clovers, what I was really looking for was good luck, right? They're lucky. I was looking for good luck, but I was also looking for validation that I was lucky. So it was kind of like a double whammy and I was getting what I was looking for. I was seeking and I was finding what I was looking for. So this one day we're on this trail and my cousins get bored with my good luck. I don't see how that could happen but they get bored with my good luck. And they're like, all right, Stevie, we're going back home. Like, this is no fun. So they decide to leave me on the trail and I was, I was on a roll, so I was going nowhere. So I'm still out there looking. And they leave and so eventually I start like turning around and going back through the same fields I just came through on my way back home. And I end up hearing out of nowhere this rustling in the bushes 
and I'm starting to get a little bit scared, but I kind of, you know, it was a little bit windy, so I'm just like, okay, I'm in the zone, I'm focusing. And then my cousins come out of the bushes, said they were going home, scare the bejesus out of me. <laughs> so mean, so cruel, but they did. So after that, they're like, okay, we're really going home this time. And here I am a little shooken up. I'm like, I'm gonna need a little bit more good luck to deal with them later. So I keep looking for my clovers and they leave. So I'm getting a little bit closer to home and I'm still adding to my collection. And I hear another noise in the bushes and I'm like, y'all not getting me twice. And I'm just like, I hear you guys, I know it's you. And I'm like probably 10 years old at the time. And I'm hearing more noise in the bushes and I'm like, you guys, you're not gonna fool me twice. I've got my handful of clovers like, and this dog comes out the bushes. Aww. Not a friendly dog. <laughs> the awe to the ooh. <laughs> I was also just very afraid of dogs. It was a bigger dog and you could tell this dog was ready to chase. And so I just start booking it. I think I probably dropped my clovers. I'm booking it. I'm running as fast as I can. And this dog is chasing me home. And I'm just looking around and I'm screaming for my dad. And he ends up meeting me at the end of the driveway. He knew I was a fast runner. So he seemed to be very unconcerned about my safety. <laughs> and uh, right as I hit my driveway, this person on a bike comes up out of nowhere. And they do a little whistle and grab their dog. <laughs> After I had been chased. So when I was reflecting back on this story, Hide and seek with spirit. Okay, so I was finding the clothes. I was finding that good luck. But also, the layer underneath that was what kind of luck it took for me to be 10 years old and outrun a dog. I got that validation. So when you play hide and seek with spirit, spirit is going to say, here I am, find me. And I was looking for good luck, and sure enough, that day, I found it. So again, the title of my talk is Hide and Seek with Spirit. And really, the way I broke it down today is not three points. Please forgive me. It's 2022. We have four points today. <laughs> <laughs> and so I really thought of keeping true to this, this metaphor, this analogy of playing hide and seek. And so really, as I thought about any game, you want to establish the goal. So what's the goal of the game? So we'll talk about the goal. The ally. I feel like with any game, there's kind of an ally. There's something that's low-hanging fruit that you can use to help you. There's always going to be a challenger or the challenge. And then, obviously, if you are looking to win, there's going to be strategy involved. So starting with the goal, what's the goal? Find which you are being, whatever you're looking for, what's been hidden from you. You're looking to find that which has been hidden from you. So obviously in hide and seek, your friends hide, you're gonna go look for them. But when I think about this game with the divine, it's about recalling this divine nature that has been hidden from us when we were born into this lifetime. All of these things that we have forgotten that we are seeking in life are things that we are actually, in my opinion, rediscovering, re-embracing and recognizing because they are mutable truths. But we know that the goal is to rediscover our true self, rediscover that connection to source. And what I find is if you are seeking connection in life, let's say that's one of the things, we're born connected to source, but maybe we forgot that. So in this lifetime, we're playing hide and seek, we're looking for connection, we're seeking for connection and it's hiding in our life. There's connections hiding everywhere in our life. And the thing is, if you ask, you shall receive. And so, hidden opportunities are gonna show up. They might be hidden in plain sight, they might be hidden more of a, in a disguise, but example, something that I have been looking for as I play this hide and seek with spirit is connection. Feeling connected to myself, to others, to the world around me at all times in a place where they're trying to make us feel so separate. This connection piece has been so important for me. And so, again, this idea of spirit responding to us, it is immutable. It is a response that is automatic. So the other day I'm with my girlfriend, we're out eating, and we went to Spinard Roadhouse. If you haven't been there, quick little plug, it's really delicious. <laughs> and um, so we're sitting down and they have just a whole bunch of pictures of animals just hanging up on their walls. Like moose, squirrel, there was some bears, I think some foxes, so just all the animals you could think of. And I'm trying to pay attention to her, but I can't stop looking at this squirrel on the wall. <laughs> Ironic. And I'm just, so we're talking, I'm just like, girl, I can't stop looking at the squirrel. I don't know what it is, but it is calling to me. <laughs> and she's like, weird, because I'm looking behind you at this moose, and I can't stop looking at it, <laughs> which is just funny. So I'm like, okay, I feel a little bit better now. So within like a couple minutes of that, our waiter comes to check on us. How are you guys doing? Can I bring you anything? And I look over at him, and I notice there's a squirrel on his shirt. 
And I'm just like, you would have a squirrel on your shirt because I'm feeling really strong squirrel energy. And he moves his vest. He's like, oh, you didn't see the moose. <laughs> and of course, in that moment, me and my girlfriend just look at each other dead in the eyes. Like, clearly, there is a connection piece that is beyond what you could ever ask for in that moment. And it was the validation as I'm playing hide and seek with spirit. And I saw that, oh, we were giddy. And we just, I mean, I think we probably were silent for five minutes as we couldn't break our stare. Like, did you just see? We were on the same page. So we know what the goal is. So the ally. For me, the ally is the safety net that, at the end of the day, there is an unspoken agreement. When we are born into this lifetime, we are already connected to source. So there is this inevitable piece of the puzzle that we cannot lose. What I had to think about as I was trying to put this into words is, before you go to play hide and seek, you're all together. Your friends are together, and you make the agreement to split up to go hide and to go find. And so when I applied that to where we are with center, with our, with our center and with our um, spirit, it's the same thing. We are one with God, we are one with love, we are one with peace. All of those things are a part of our being. And in being born into this planet, this time frame, we took an agreement to allow certain things to be hidden from us, certain truths to be hidden from us, so that way we could undergo the divine search, that search that keeps us alive, that brings the joy into our lives. So we, in a sense, agreed to close our eyes. And when I thought of it that way, a lot of the areas in my life where I felt like I was missing something or I was constantly searching for things, and I felt like a victim almost, and I felt sorry for myself, it was like, wait, I, I signed up for this. So, and then I had to realize there is no losing. There is no way to lose because everything that I'm looking for even if I don't see it, it's already inside of me. So the ally is that there is an unspoken safety net when it comes to this hide and seek. Because we do subconsciously and spiritually have these truths within us. And that is one of the most important foundations of our affirmative prayer, is that we see these truths, that we're able to align ourselves with these truths, whether or not the appearances reflect them. So along with that, that ally, there is also the challenger. And in the game of hide and seek, you have a certain amount of time because you're not gonna have people hiding in these nooks and crannies for two hours while you try to go look for them. People get bored. And so obviously that is, that is the challenge. You get so much time to, to look for whatever it is you're trying to find. And applying this to real life, yeah, there is a challenge of time that it feels like we're up against sometimes. Running up against the clock, whether it feels like we're aging or so much time in the day or splitting yourself with all the tasks and things to do, time is that challenge when it comes to playing this game, this divine game of hide and seek. So what I had to really think about was, okay, but what do we believe about time in this philosophy? And what do we believe about ourselves within this philosophy? We believe that we are infinite, eternal beings. And if we are eternal, time becomes irrelevant. So that main piece that keeps so many people trapped in fear of not being able to achieve in time or being able to hit goals or do enough, when we kind of can remove that element of the puzzle, then we can tap into the joy aspect. Because I think that that's really what this whole speech is about today, is how do we bring that playfulness back into these day-to-day -day experiences? And I think when we allow ourselves to remember that truth of are innate beings, that time is not real. Obviously, there is a certain limited amount of time on this planet, absolutely. But our souls are eternal. And so as we are navigating through this game of hide and seek, have fun. Don't rush, because it's the little things when you slow down that are going to remind you, like, oh, this is, this is what I've been looking for. So the next piece, we kind of went over the goal. We know the ally, the challenger, so the strategy. Now again, it's not about winning or losing. I do want to stress that. It's about having fun. Whether or not you win or lose during the game or hide to seek, everybody is just enjoying the fact that we are participating. And that's just the biggest thing I want to stress because anytime you talk about any game, people are like, ooh, game. So there's a winner and there's a loser. No, everybody can win. And I think that that's why this, this really resonated with me. When we surrender to the fact that we have, in one sense or another, co-created coming to this planet, 
to this time frame, as crazy as it seems, then we can release a little bit of the resistance to the element of the unknown and embrace the element of the unknown because that is in the fine print of coming to planet Earth. It is in the fine print. So again, the purpose is to hide things that we may already know about ourselves on a cellular level, on a subconscious level, so we can enjoy the opportunity to take pleasure in seeking it, take pleasure in allowing it to be revealed to us, the fun in searching, the fulfillment of finding. What you seek is also seeking you, and that's Rumi. All of the things, all of this is made possible by the blessings itself, the thing itself going into incognito mode. And when I think about, again, kind of thinking about the, the idea of being up against time and, and that pressure, it's like we are always in tune with that truth when we can quiet the noise around us. And so hone in. So I was thinking about this. Okay, so. If you take all this in mind, now you have to kind of learn how to be a good looker. If you're not in a rush, that's great, but how do you learn to search? How do you become aware enough to where the things that you are seeking, you will actually find them? And I came up with a couple of different ideas, but really it's about being mindful and attentive. And it is about recognizing sometimes afterwards that, oh, that was what I was looking for. And I think that sometimes that builds our confidence when we don't see it right away, but we can reflect on times when we did get that revelation. So a couple things that we can do, slow down. Slow down. And I talk fast, I move fast, I drive fast. <laughs> so this is for me right now. That was the first thing I wrote down. I think Spirit was like, that's for you. Slow down. I would spend hours at that field of clovers and nothing mattered but being able to feel that connection with Source. Breathe often. Breathing is something we do naturally. You don't have to think about it, but when you do think about it, it allows you to recenter in this moment. So go ahead and just take that deep breath. And do it often and intentionally. One of my personal favorites on this list is genuine compliments. I was reading at work ways to develop detail-orientedness. I'm training people on being more thorough, and that is a harder thing to teach somebody <laughs> than you would ever realize. And so I'm on Google, I'm like, how do you teach people to be more thorough? <laughs> Literally. And when I saw this list, I was like, wow. And genuine compliments was on the list, because if you're doing a genuine compliment, you've slowed down to really observe the person that you're in front of. And I thought that that was really beautiful. And I've done it my whole life. I'm so quick to just call out somebody's energy, their light, their feel. We love a good outfit, too. <laughs> but there's so much more. And so genuine compliments, helping you to become more aware in the moment so that way when you are seeking that of which is hiding, it can be easier to find it. Journal. Journaling is another way. Obviously, I'm a writer, so for me, I had to put this on the list. Uh, but it has helped me become more aware because once I go into journaling mode, I'm starting to think back and reflect back on experiences that I've had and a lot of times I'm realizing, oh, I did find that which I was looking for. I didn't even connect the dots. Meditation obviously has to fall within this list because mindfulness a lot of times comes from meditation. Somebody needs to hear this because I wasn't going to put it on the list. Protect your sleep. Uh, if it's you, here's your divine hint. Protect your sleep, because when we are trying to play catch up and tired, then everything just seems like we're just rolling over. So that, that is a huge one. Do puzzles, do puzzles. Keep your mind in that playful set of finding that activity, finding the, the fun within accomplishment and also just doing. Do puzzles and do them often. My grandmother would always do crossword puzzles. And as a kid, I was like, how can you spend hours on a crossword puzzle? And then I realized she was kind of developing a skill, a cognitive skill that I really admired when I was older. Get creative and use your hands. Do things that are going to keep you engaged and present in the moment. So my takeaway, I've been challenged to keep my speeches to a better, shorter time. So <laughs> we've already made it to my takeaway. <laughs> Just kidding, Rev. <laughs> So when we embrace that this is, the, this is a game that we have agreed to be a part of, a dance, if I may, with spirit, 
it becomes that much more pleasurable for us. Now, every game has its challenges. I'm not saying it's always going to be roses, peaches, and daisies. But when we can embrace the fact that we, on some level, said yes to coming here, to being a spiritual self in a human fleshly body, that resistance starts to fade. Also, learn to practice how you recognize how spirit shows up in your life. It may be four-leaf clovers for me. It's the squirrel on the wall when I can't focus for me. It's the things that I hear when I'm told to tilt my head and then boom, I see what I was looking for and it was right in the corner of my vision. That's what it looks like for me, but it's gonna look different for everybody because spirit is infinite to the individual. And so practice developing that communication with spirit to where you can recognize this, this is that game, this is my opportunity to seek of which I am looking for. And then the most important thing, and I couldn't stress this enough, it's not win or lose. And if we have goals that feels like sometimes we don't get to achieve, that's okay too, because it's about the experience. And I think that that's something we could all be reminded of. So I'm gonna ask my colleagues at this moment to support me as we transition into our prayer. Taking a moment to just breathe consciously recognizing that there is a higher power that is actually breathing us. This power that is love, that is peace, that is infinite wholeness. This immutable truth of love and creation, it is not self-destructive. It is not separate. It is oneness. And we are born in the likeness of this truth. We are born with the DNA to reflect this truth. We are born with everything that we need to express this truth. And so as I call forth this awareness of my spiritual self, I call forth that awareness of every person on earth, on one level or another, that we are source. We are one, for source could never be separate. So therefore, how could we? And so as I call forth this peace of oneness, I feel this sense of love, this sense of encouragement, this sense of calmness as we embrace the still, the stillness that allows us to say yes, yes to our divine nature. I'm seeing people putting down their weapons, their weapons that are mental, that are working against us, the weapons that may be physical, they set them down and they just say yes to love for it is the only thing that is real. And so we look beyond the chaos of today, we look beyond the turmoil of today, and we see this cry for love, for acceptance, for oneness. And we just allow ourselves to give thanks that we can be the way showers, we are the light bearers. And so for that I just give great thanks. Thankful for this recognition, for this awareness, and for this level of acceptance of our truth and that we can represent that on a greater whole the micro for the macro and so it is with great thanks that i allow this prayer to be sent to the ethers of the universe knowing that it is already on the wings of the divine it is already taken care of it is already perfect whole and complete and so we let go with full confidence that love is being revealed right here right now and so it is. If I wanna have more love in my life, it's time to open my heart up and let it shine. Whatever. i 
the time in the service where we are afforded the opportunity to participate in another one of our spiritual practices, that being the law of circulation. I'd like to recognize a few of the uh, people that we uh, have online today that we identified, Cynthia George, Trish Wade, Michelle Moore-Jones, Judith Mack, Kaleem, Candy Moore, Jean Karwowski, Luann, oh, she's got a new, Luann Hines-Pogue. So, uh, thank you for watching today. We are still at the place where we have uh, more people online than we do physically here. And we certainly have a diverse online group. I haven't seen the uh, person from Rwanda back yet, but uh, we've reached uh, a long ways. So, to join me in our affirmation. Divine, Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and so it is.
is my source, God is my power, God is my source, God is my power, God is my source. God is my source, God is my power, God is my source, God is my power, God is my source, God is my power, God is my source. God is my source, God is my power, 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 God is my source, God is my power. All right, I think we can say it again. God is my source and God is my power. So we anchor ourselves in this moment as we come to a close, and we give thanks. Take a breath, feel the breath. We make a connection to the breath because this is our operating system that is connected with the divine. We get it as a gift of being human. What a glorious thing to know. We have an apparatus that can tell us where we're at. And if we're breathing from our chest, it's a fight or flight mode. The intention of the breath is to breathe deeply and fully. So in this now moment, while we continue to breathe and put our awareness, we give thanks. We give thanks that we have said yes to today, to the inspiration, to the music, to being refreshed, renewed, and revitalized. We say yes to the affirmation we pulled out of the basket. We say yes to springtime and to our devotion to our own evolution with our spiritual practices our takeaway to be mindful, peaceful, awake, aware, and engaged. And for all these gifts and many more that are seen and unseen, we say yes. We release this to the divine working of a perfect law. And together we say, and so it is. Namaste. I'm alive. Here I am. I'm ready to thrive. Here I am. It feels good to be me. Here I am. I'm feeling so free. Ready to blast it.